Alrighty, Realtors, this video is for you. We're gonna talk about a tax method to help you guys save a ton of money. Full disclosure, I'm not, a, I'm not an accountant, but this is a method that I've used myself and my business and it saved us tons of money, but especially with the year coming to an end, you really should focus on doing this and, and learning it well. Hi, I'm Terry Bailey with Selling Utah Real Estate. So the way it typically works, us as real estate professionals, we take a portion of our checks, 20, 30, 40, 50%, whatever you're, you know, what you've been up to, whatever works for you. But we take that portion of our check and we push it forward and save it essentially in an account for whenever tax season comes. But with the cost segregation method, I'm essentially using it so I don't have to save a bunch of money there. I'm able to use my tax money to buy, you know, to buy property, right? And the the gist and the key to doing this is buying properties with lower money down. So for example, there's a really good 10% program here in Utah. That's one that we use pretty often. Very, very good program. Any questions about it, reach out separately, but really good. Program. Well, let's talk about how depreciation works, right? With depreciation, you're able to depre depreciate a property over, I think it's 70, 27 and a half years. So let's just round it up to 30 years for easy math. It's the value of the property minus the land value. So say you have a $500,000 house and the land is worth 200,000. It's the 300,000 that you're able to essentially write off year over year. So let's say it's for easier number, let's say it's 30 years, right? So you're able to write off $10,000 a year for the next 30 years with that property. But you could you also use the cost segregation method. It essentially allows you to accelerate depreciation and take a big lump sum upfront. So you could take, you know, 100, 150 of that 300 and take it all upfront in the first year. Maybe it's 200, right? It depends on, the, there's a lot of variables to go into it. That's where I talk to your accountants about it and figure out exactly how it works. There's a good website, it's uh, DIYCostSec.com, where it's like do-it-yourself cost segregation method, kind of show you a lot of what you do. But say you're taking $300,000 property, 200,000, 100,000, it doesn't matter too much what the cost sec method is on that, but let's say you made 300,000 this year, right? And like your net on that is 200,000. If you're able to take 150 of that by just buying another property, right? If your net was 200,000, then depending on your tax bracket and all that stuff, but a lot of times in the higher brackets, we're having to pay like you know, 40, 50% of it, right? Let's say it's just 30%, right? You're paying, spending 60 grand in taxes on 200,000 or you buy this $300,000 condo with 10% down and after closing costs and everything, say you're into it 40,000, but now you have this 100, 150, $200,000 write off. And so now you just saved all this money in taxes by doing it that way. So that 40,000 that you get through the cost seg, if you do it right, a lot of times it's able to offset that. So you're essentially using your tax money to buy a property that's now a cash flow producing asset that continues to pay for it, pay itself down year over year over year. Now there is a recapture that's associated with it. If you're able to, if you were to sell the property, you'd have to essentially pay back the prorated amount of the cost segregation method, or you just roll it into another property and then do cost seg on that other bigger property, kick the can down the line. Again, I'm not a tax professional. Talk to your accountants about it. There's your disclosures that you need on it. But, uh, but it's a method that we use and that's more or less how we use it. We advocate to you guys to take and learn to do these different things. Learn to shift your mentality a little bit on like taxes, how you structure things, um, and use this to make more money, keep more money in your jeans. Yeah, and on top of that, you're buying rental properties that are gonna pay themselves off, be assets for you the rest of your life if you're buying the right properties. That's my advice for the week. Hope it's beneficial for your, all you real estate agents out there. Now, a lot of times I don't make content specifically for real estate agents, but this one I felt like is, is really important. And it also applies to a lot of other folks. But typically with real estate income, you can only write off for real estate depreciation. You can only write off real estate income unless you're a full-time real estate professional. And I'm not exactly sure on the hour count that's required for that, but it's a certain amount of hours a year working in real estate qualifies you as a real estate professional. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and yeah, we'll keep on keeping on.